This is the new evolution of HackRF Portal Pack, a relatively cheap portable SDR device capable of receiving, analyzing, decoding and even transmitting a wide variety of radio signals, but now in a sleek new design with a much better and bigger screen and battery and some new internals. A useful toolkit for anyone interested in wireless communication. This is Porter RF. This new, unexpected, weird evolution of HackRF Porter Pack is designed by Open Source SDR Lab, and they've kindly sent me this one to make this video. This is a really odd product, and I have some thoughts about it, but let's first take a look at what's new with this device. Just like previous hacker with Porter Packs, this is a software defined radio that covers 1 MHz to 6 GHz and can transmit and receive. The custom open source software that runs on this battery powered portable device has a bunch of interesting functionality, like tracking airplanes and boats, copying remote control signals, and decoding and transmitting a bunch of radio signals as well as just being a really handy portable spectrum analyzer. And of course, it also plays games. The new Porter RF has an improved larger 4-inch IPS display, which has much better color rendition and viewing angles, as well as a higher resolution. The touch functionality, while still being resistive and not capacitive, also feels more accurate. The new display is, however, glossy, Unlike the Porter Pack H4M, which had a matte display that didn't show fingerprints as clearly, which I preferred. We also find a new 3000 mAh battery, upgraded from the 2500 mAh one in the H4M. And this new one has protection against overcharging, discharging and short circuits. Something that was apparently missing in earlier versions of the H4M that open source SDR Lab sold. The SPI flash chip that the firmware is stored on has been doubled in size from 1 megabyte to 2 megabytes. And of course, this new Porter RF looks significantly different from all previous Hacker with Porter packs. It has a thin and flat, but also quite wide design. The case is clearly a better quality than previous Porter packs, and for the first time, it almost feels like a real commercial product. There is a rotating encoder on the top right with the center button, below it a red joystick that also clicks in, and to the right of that is the built-in microphone. On the front we also find the DFU and reset buttons, which are slightly recessed and unlikely to be pushed by accident. The status LEDs are located on the bottom, next to the SD card slot and the on-off button, which is a nice secure sliding one. On the right side we find the headphone jack and the USB-C connector. The SMA antenna connector is located on the top and behind the grill on the back is the speaker. To understand how and why this new Porter RF looks so different, we have to take a look inside of it. Originally Hacker RF was only a single board PCB SDR transceiver that had to be connected to a computer through USB to be used. Porter Pack was a clever development of a screen and buttons that connects on top of HackRF boards through the header connectors, forming a PCB sandwich that works together to run a bunch of different software portably without needing a computer. Throughout the years, the HackRF boards and the Porter Pack boards have been developed further but have always been compatible with each other and have always been sandwiched together in the same way. The new Porter RF is a completely new design that combines the components from Hack RF and Porter Pack into a unified single board device. As we take a look inside the new Porter RF, we also find some weird things. In this pre-production version I have here, there are actually two speakers inside, but only one is connected. And this has to do with this little weird extra board in the corner. As you might remember, the Porter Pack H4M had this new addition of a GPIO connector on the side, 
which allowed for connecting modules to expand the functionality of Porter Pack. Open Source SDR Lab also made one such module, which is this ESP32 MDK project board. Besides adding Wi-Fi functionality and more external processing power, it also allowed for modding in other chips, for instance a GPS, which could be used for the fox hunting application or for finding your position on the ADSB decoder map. The new Porter RF has an internal expansion module connector in the corner, and this little board in my pre-production version is a small version of the ESP32 MDK board. However, this is actually supposed to be a different board. Maybe? Open source SDR Lab are toying with the idea of adding what they are calling AI functionality to the Porter RF. The final version might ship with a different expansion board that features a microphone and voice command functionality. This is why there is a second speaker, which is supposed to be connected to this AI expansion board. And there is a hole in the front part of the case where the microphone is supposed to be. This idea of using AI functionality is also why we have this weird AI FW logo on the front which is short for AI firmware. You might also notice that my pre-production version is missing the RF shield over the radio part of the PCB, but this will be added in the final product. The radio part of Porter RF is identical to the HackRF Revision 10 board. This is not the Clifford Heath version of HackRF. Open source SDR lab seems to be convinced that this R10 design is robust enough to prevent the amp from randomly self-destructing, but only time will tell if they are correct. To my knowledge, the R10 board design does not have amp protection. You might want to watch my video about the Clifford Heat fork of HackRF to get a better understanding of the potential problem in this decision. This is in many ways a very cool, but also very weird new device. I don't really like this big new red joystick. While it's nice enough to use, it protrudes unnecessarily and makes the device much thicker than it could have been. It's also weird that there are these two OK buttons. One in the center rotary dial and another as you press down on the joystick. But they both do the same thing. It's a bit annoying to have to shift your finger from one input device to the other when navigating the interface. I much prefer the combined and flat dial and buttons from the H4M, which could have just as easily been put right here instead and it would have made the device much more sleek. There is no external GPIO connector anymore, which is too bad. There are, however, apparently connections on the PCB that you could potentially solder a pin header to and modify the case if you wanted to. It would have been nice to see this added by default though. While I haven't tried the new AI voice command expansion board, I really don't understand why you would want that. Moving the regular ESP32 MDK expansion board inside is however great for portability. But then I would have much preferred to have a GPS and compass sensor built in as well, which seems much more useful for Mayhem applications. Having this ESP32 permanently connected could also enable much more complicated digital decoding software which could offload the heavy processing to the ESP32 chip. The case snaps together which makes it quite difficult to disassemble. I actually cracked it slightly while taking it apart. This is not ideal for a hobby project device that is supposed to be played around with and be modded. However, I'm told that this pre-production version of the plastic case that I have is slightly less accurate and more brittle than the final version. Maybe there should have been a little opening on the back, in the corner, where the ESP32 module is located, so that it could be more easily be replaced or flashed with new firmware, without having to take the entire device apart. But generally, I would have preferred it to be an easier to disassemble case held together with screws. Porter RF is compatible with the same Mayhem firmware that runs on regular Porter packs. However, since the screen resolution is different, the developers have been hard at work figuring out how to make everything work correctly on this new device. And most things are already working fine. 
Going forward, it is the intention that the regular version of the Mayhem firmware will work on either Porter PAX or Porter RF interchangeably. But this also brings up the question of what the advantage of having a larger SPI flash storage capacity on the Porter RF actually is, if the firmware has to be backwards compatible with regular Porter packs and fit in their smaller flash storage anyway. Just like regular Porter packs, you will need to download the accompanying application, map configuration and sample files from the Mayhem GitHub and put them on a micro SD card to get all of the functionality out of your device. The new screen is really nice, much sharper and clearer, especially when you go back and look at the old Porter pack. It's still not bright enough to be used in direct sunlight though. Porter RF also feels really sleek to hold and operate. It feels much more like an actual commercial product instead of that sandwich of good intentions that the old Porter pack is. At first I was a bit confused about it being so wide, but seeing the internal PCB design makes it obvious why it is this way. It's basically a slightly wider hacker with board. And now that I'm used to it, it actually feels much more secure to hold it in this horizontal orientation. Having the DFU and reset buttons on the front is actually really useful and makes it much easier to open the debug menu or reset if something goes wrong. And the new battery capacity gives you much more confidence that the device won't just shut off suddenly or burst into flames while charging. Even with the flaws of this weird device, I cannot help but applaud that open source SDR lab are at least attempting to drive forward hardware development in a really niche, low budget market that few others venture into. The pre-order price of Porter RF is 255 US dollars, which is $90 more than an assembled hacker of Porterpack H4M. There is no difference in radio performance between these two devices, so if you want to save some money, just get the cheaper one. The new Porter RF is much nicer to use, however, and both devices are still relatively cheap considering you're getting a very wide frequency range SDR device capable of receiving, transmitting and decoding in a portable package. This is still just a cheap SDR though. It's not very sensitive. It only has an 8-bit ADC, a maximum bandwidth of 20 MHz and it's only a half duplex transmitter and the transmit output power is very low at about 10 to 20 milliwatts. There are plenty of better SDR devices out there, but they also cost a lot more money. Even a cheap RTL SDR block V4 is a more sensitive receiver. And while it's much, much cheaper, it doesn't cover as wide of a frequency range, it doesn't transmit, and it doesn't work standalone. In this price range, everything is a compromise. Just keep that in mind and consider what functionality you want or need when making a purchasing decision. Be aware that Open Source SDR Lab also sells a completely different product called Wave Sentry, which looks kind of similar, but otherwise has nothing to do with the Porter RF. And this might be an even weirder device, but that's not what this video is about. Just don't get them confused. HackRF is a 10-year-old open source hardware design made by Michael Osman. While you can buy HackRF manufactured by his company, Red Scott Gadgets, the open source license allows anyone to manufacture devices from the same readily available components. You can find a bunch of different random sellers online of HackRF and Porter Pack, and the devices are mostly identical. I would suggest buying from open source SDR Lab though, as they are actually supporting developers, engaging in new hardware development and customer support directly. I'm not paid by open source SDR Lab, this video is not sponsored, other than them sending me this device for free. It's just my own personal observation. If you're in the US, then Rapid Labs is a really good seller of Porter Pack H4M. I'm not sure if they will also be stocking Porter RF in the future as well. The open source license also allow for any forked redesigns of HackRF, like the version by Clifford Heath. Any forked designs have to be released as open source as well to legally adhere to the GPL license. Open source STR Lab have been the driving force of the latest Porter Pack H4M redesign, 
which they have released as open source, as well as this new Porter RF, which they say that they will also be releasing the source files for. If you've stumbled across this video and have no idea what the HackRF Porter Pack is all about, I would suggest you go watch my beginner's guide. It covers most of what you need to know to get started. And since the firmware and hardware is mostly identical, it will also help you get started with the Porter RF. Thanks to Open Source SDR Lab for sending me this pre-production model so that I could make this video. And I hope I've given you a small insight into what the Porter RF is all about.